the character traits that drive a tyrannical person are, are, are deep in each, in each instant and different in each instance. But he's a real one, it seems to me. He's a real one. He's never, ever, ever accepted the legitimacy of equals. He has never, never, ever accepted the possibility of a non-zero-sum engagement in which two sides can win. It always has to be his domination. Uh, this is a form of, I would think if you met someone like that in your everyday life, you'd think you would inch your way out of the room and try and stay away from this person. Uh, it's a form of mental illness. And yet it's a mental illness that does not mean that you're irrational. It's, it's, a, it's a complex that drives you to do very rational things, but in ways that are incredibly dangerous to others. And people studied his psychiatry. We have a whole chapter in the book with Paul Ryan yeah. studying narcissistic personality. He's the personality. Speaker of the House. <laughs> I mean, oh at, at this point, when Trump comes in and what, and go. I mean, he realizes he studies these articles given to him by a donor. Don't humiliate this person in public. But to your point about his personality. He's got a narcissistic personality disorder. In the eyes now, of Ryan. We, we don't. We're not know, doctors. We're not that. Uh, but you're humans and I'm a human being and I've noticed people who are crazy. He's absolutely out of his mind in some respects and yet cool, coolly rational in others. This, this isn't in the book, but one scene that I always stick with covering Trump is in 2015. I'm with him backstage, one of the only reporters traveling with him at that time with Corey Lewandowski and Hope Hicks, and it's his first rally in Arizona. And he's seeing this crowd, and the crowd's okay, enthusiastic. And then he starts going into build the wall, and the crowd, for the first time, roars. And he looks back at Lewandowski and Hicks, who are standing next to me, and he gives them this quick grin, and he goes right back to the wall. We're gonna build it even higher. Build the wall, and the crowd gets whipped into a frenzy. And that smile of Trump back at Corey and Hope always stands with me mm. that he is, some say it's a marketer, some say it's a demagogue, whatever it is, he's listening to the crowd and reacting to the crowd and going right back to the wound. And he has a product that will sell. And the product is himself. And now, let's, I mean, what we try to do as reporters and uh, I just want to read this. This is um, um, one week after the election, November 3rd. Uh, what it has happened is Trump has fired the Secretary of Defense and installed somebody who he thinks will do his bidding. And it's Gina Haspel, who's somebody we do not hear from very often. She's the CIA director. And she says this idea of firing uh, Esper, who was a, a West Point classmate of Pompeo's. And, and she says the following, yesterday was appalling. We are on the way to a right-wing coup. The whole thing is insanity. He is acting out like a six-year-old with a tantrum, end quote. Now, that is some a, a woman... 35 years in the CIA, trained as a case officer by all accounts an aggressive, some think overly aggressive uh, case officer, but somebody who was schooled in assessing instability. And this is her assessment, a, a right-wing coup, a six-year-old with a tantrum. And uh, that lives with us. It's, yes. it, again, it's like something we talk about a lot. The CIA director, nonpartisan, believed this country was on the brink of a possible right-wing coup during the transition. And that, to your point, Andrew, even if Trump himself is not coordinating this in an explicit or sometimes organized fashion, there's a rolling nature to it and him installing his own people into these positions. And he's ready for the possibility of amassing even more power. Now, let me get to the obvious consequence of this, that what you've described, what your th three books show chronologically, and I, I would urge people to sit down and read them in order, because I agree with you entirely that chronology is everything. You, you, his, his capacity is to get you distracted for 10 seconds. Your job is to sit down and see what he's really doing underneath. This has been demonstrated 
it is not as if all these acts are a mystery. You guys, other people have detailed it. Some of it has been in front of our very eyes. That this man nearly took this country's entire constitution down. This man is irrational, dangerous, angry, uh, a six-year-old having a tantrum. And yet today in the United States, one of the two major parties is still in his thrall. It does not seem that there has been no moment at which this grip has weakened, even January 6th, even an actual attempt to use violence. And those scenes that you describe of him opening the door oh. so you can hear the mob. That is, that is the scene of the book to me. I agree. I agree. That's your favorite scene. I mean, favorite is a strange it's word. This it's this absolutely vivid picture of a man using a mob to threaten the Constitution. And Woodward would, would often say to me, when he was writing The Final Days with about Carl Nixon. Bernstein about Nixon, that Nixon would be talking to the pictures on the wall and that Trump isn't talking to the pictures in The Final Days. He's talking to the mob. And the thing I would hear from sources is that the people inside the Oval Office on the night of January 5th, 2021, are shivering, 31 degrees, shivering, saying, Mr. President, can we please close the door? No. Keep it open. I want to hear my people. They have courage. They are the ones who fight. 